Hey guys, and welcome to the sixth video in this multi-part series on how to study words for Tournament Scrabble, where we'll be talking about studying the four world rewards and some of the most useful fives. Now, at this point, we've been through all of the twos and threes, as well as some of the most useful four world rewards and some high probability bingos. So it is time to uh, take the next step forward and go through all of the remaining four world rewards and start diving into the five other words. Now, the four-letter words are sort of the next natural step after the three-letter words, since if you uh, have a good grasp on the three-letter words, it becomes really, really useful to know all the fours, because very often four-letter words are formed by hooking a tile or placing a tile at the beginning or end of a three-letter word already on the board. So once you are familiar with all the three-letter words, knowing all the fours will really help you strategize and also score a lot of points if you know which threes can become four-letter words. Uh, the useful fives are very similar to the useful fours. It's sort of the first natural step before the transition to learning all of the fives, which we'll be talking about in the next video. Uh, but once again, those are going to be the five other words that contain a power tile, so either a J, Q, X, or Z, because those are really, really useful for scoring large numbers of points or getting rid of some uh, troublesome high point tiles on your rack. And also five other words with four vowels, which we call vowel dumps, since those are also quite helpful if you have a rack with like five or six vowels and uh, they can really make the difference between having to exchange tiles and score zero points or being able to clear up your rack while uh, at least scoring a decent number of points on that turn. So just to uh, set the stage, these are some of those useful fives that we'll be talking about in this video. So one such word that comes up a lot is umiak, U-M-I-A-Q. This is often a really useful word if you have a Q without a U, as often there'll be like a U on the board that you need to start with, and there isn't a good place to play QI. And the umiak often comes in handy not only to unload the Q, but score quite a lot of points. Uh, Aurei, A-U-R-E-I, is a really useful vowel dump. It's uh, very often you've got uh, an A, a U, an E, an I, and a few other vowels on your rack, and uh, you're not going to be able to score a lot of points since all of the vowels score uh, it's just a single point, but if you can play off Aurei for like 15 or 20 and salvage your rack, that's often a much more satisfying turn than exchanging tiles. And finally, on the bottom left, uh, we have Xylan, X-Y-L-A-N, which is uh, often a really fun word to, to play as uh, your opponent often isn't expecting a, an X to be a very useful opening since not a lot of words start with an X, but if you have the right tiles, then this word can uh, really rack you up a lot of points. So with that in mind, let's uh, jump right in to how we would practically study these two word lists uh, using the Ziziva tool. So as we can see here, like in the previous videos, I've per pulled up the search pane on Ziziva. And if I want to start with the four other words, what I'm going to do, as we've been doing before, is just pull up a search for all of the fours. So the easiest way to do that, uh, or one of the easiest ways, is just to use this anagram match function and type in four blanks. And you'll see that there are quite a lot of words here. There's about 4,200 four other words in the dictionary. And uh, that's a larger chunk than we've looked at in any of the previous videos. For instance, the three other words, there are only just over a thousand. So it's gonna be a bit more challenging to study this group of words all at the same time. Uh, you can do that if you, uh, if you want to. What you can do is basically follow the previous videos and uh, more or less just sort these words by alphabetical order and then uh, read through all, all of these and then do a, do a quiz on all of the words. Uh, if, uh, if you want to, to try that, you very much can. However, I find it's a little bit easier to split these up just because 4,000 words at the, at the same time, especially when a lot of them are going to be unfamiliar, is a lot to take in. So uh, what I would do with the fours is probably split them up alphabetically. You could do it by probability similarly to what we did for the bingos, but I think it doesn't really make sense for, for the fours since they, they all do come up quite a bit since they're they're short enough. So doing it by probability isn't really going to actually reflect the likelihood of them being useful in the game. And uh, alphabetically, I think you'll just uh, internalize them better and have a, a better handle based on studying them alphabetically, whether something is, is valid and whether you saw it within that uh, that subset of letters. So one way you could do this is uh, do a couple of letters at a time. So let's say I wanted to look at all of the fours that start with either an A, a B, or a C. Then what I'm going to do is instead of this anagram match function, I'm going to switch it over to a pattern match and change this first blank to a uh, bracket notation followed by A, B, C. And what the bracket does is it's basically an either or. So this looks for all four letter words that start with either an A, a B, or a C, and then are followed by three of any letter. And now you'll see if I hit search that the list is far shorter, right? There's only 726 words. So it's just still a bit of a long list, but it's a lot more manageable than 4,200. So what you could do here is 
uh, basically just do as we've been doing for the previous list. So sort these and then read through all of these uh, going through and uh, making note of some of the more obscure ones that you don't know. And then once you've read through this list a couple times, uh, what I would do is create a, uh, a quiz from this list and then hit OK. And, uh, and of course, you will you will know that all of these words do start with either an A, a B or a C. So that may make it a little bit easier. But ultimately, when we're done going through all the uh, individual alphabetical list, we'll be doing a, a quiz with all 4000 words anyway. So I think this is perfectly fine while you're still getting to learn the words. So this one uh, coincidentally happens to be in alphabetical order. Uh, alphabetical order. Of course, it's going to be clop. Uh, and then uh, I would just basically keep going through this uh, this quiz until I'd gotten through all of the questions. And then like we've been doing before, go to the analyze quiz tab over here and then do a quiz on all of the missed words until you've gotten them all correct at least once. It's worth noting that for some of these questions, there will be multiple anagrams and that the anagram of the word that starts with an A, B or C might not start with uh, an A, a, B or a C. I don't really think there's a way to get around that, unfortunately. But, uh, but if anything, it'll at least, uh, the fours with multiple anagrams, you will be seeing them multiple times. So if anything, it'll at least help you internalize those uh, a little bit better, which is uh, certainly not a bad thing. So once you've gone through uh, all of these, then basically what I would do is uh, just go back to the search pane and then move on to the next set of letters. Like let's say you want to go to DEFG next. Uh, then I'm going to just change the bracket from ABC to DEFG. And you'll see now I have a chunk of another 760 words. So pretty similar to what we did before for ABC. And then once again, you're going to do the same exact thing. You're going to uh, sort these and then read through the entire list and then go through that iterative quizzing process we've been doing where you do the quiz and then do repeated quizzes on all of the ones that you've missed until you've gotten all of the words uh, correct at least one time. And then uh, once you've done this for all of the different uh, alphabetical sets, uh, or however you choose to uh, split this up, then what I would make sure to do is, uh, since you've only seen these words uh, sort of within their own smaller subset, is do a quiz on all of the fours. So what I'm going to do now is use this create quiz function from the toolbar, and then just simply go back to anagram match for blanks. And now when I create this quiz, you'll see there are a lot of questions. There's 2,836 questions, uh, which comes out to about 4,200 total words after factoring anagrams into account. Uh, and then you're going to just go through this entire quiz. And this quiz will probably take several study sessions to, to go through as it's quite a lot of words. So what you're going to want to make sure to do as we uh, talked about for some of the uh, the other quizzes is use this save quiz feature where you can save your progress and then come back to the quiz later since uh, I, I definitely wouldn't recommend going through all 4000 words at the same time as uh, by the end of it, you'll probably uh, start not uh, not internalizing them or remembering them quite as strongly. So definitely better to split this one up and use the save quiz function. But uh, I think once you go through this entire quiz and then uh, once again, go through any fours that you've missed, which hopefully won't be too many at this point, since you'll have seen all the other ones and gotten them correct at least once on a quiz. So hopefully it won't be too many. It'll probably still be a few. Um, but I think once you go through this process, you, you won't have a perfect knowledge uh, of the fours, but you'll have at least seen all of them several times and be familiar with them. And, uh, and really the way you'd want to cement them in is just to kind of keep doing this over and over, like keep quizzing yourself on the entire list uh, until the number of missed ones you have is uh, ideally zero or if not very, very small. Uh, and then as you see that missed number going further down, that's when you'll start to know you've got a, a pretty solid grasp on the fours. Uh, but they, they are a, a large list and they definitely do take a bit longer than some of the shorter lists we've been looking at. But I do think they'll really help you, especially since, as we were mentioning earlier, once you know all of the threes, a lot of these fours are able to be formed by adding a tile to the beginning or end of the threes. So they'll really be useful in maximizing your score and fitting even more words on the board than you could have before with your pre-existing knowledge. So with that in mind, let's now move to the next list we were going to talk about in this video, which is a shorter list, but also a really useful list, namely the vowel dump fives and the high point tile fives. So these we're going to, uh, as we did for the fours, split into two lists. We'll start with the vowel dump fives as it's a pretty short list. So what I'm going to do is do uh, five blanks for anagram match. This would give me all the fives and then I'm going to filter by number of vowels and then make that four or more. And uh, there's actually only 22 words in this list. It's a, an extremely short list, but they're all very, very useful words. So you see a uh, uh, which we talked about earlier, uh, you see a few common words like 
Q and Eerie that both come up a lot. You see things like uh, Meow, which is a bit of an unusual spelling for uh, for the more common Meow, M-E-O-W. Uh, and then you see some uh, other pretty uh, fun words like Ali-E, A-A-L-I-I. -I. Uh, no idea if I'm actually pronouncing that correctly, but it's, uh, it's a word that comes up quite a lot. Uh, and yeah, this list is, is pretty short, so what you can do here is just uh, read through it and then do a, a quick quiz. And I think after one or two iterations, you should have these all down pretty solidly. Uh, and then for the second part, it's going to be a little bit longer. Uh, what we're going to do now is uh, if we want to find all of the fives that contain at least one of JQXZ, we're going to switch this number of vowels to consists of. And then uh, as we did before, this can just be 1%. As long as it's anything greater than zero and not uh, too high, that should be perfectly fine. And then JQXZ. And once we add a search, uh, then we'll see here there are about 750 words. So uh, what you can do here is uh, I would probably uh, try to do this list all, all at once. Uh, and then just uh, as we've done before, uh, sort them alphabetically and uh, read through the entire list. And then uh, once you have, uh, have read through the list and feel somewhat familiar with it, then uh, as we've been uh, discussing for the other list, uh, you're just gonna create a quiz and then go through this quiz uh, until you've gone through it uh, a couple times as well as all of the, the missed words and feel fairly comfortable with all of them and then uh, start afresh and redo the uh, the whole quiz. And then hopefully after you've been through this list uh, a couple of times, then uh, you'll be uh, pretty comfortable with the high point fives, which will be a really, really useful tool in your uh, in your arsenal. There's a lot of fun, obscure words there that, uh, that can often make the difference between uh, playing like QI for 11 and then being able to play Umiyak for, for 60 points and, uh, and really just continuing to use your word knowledge to increase your average score. So yeah, that's uh, pretty much it for this video. Once again, here we have uh, covered all of the four other words as well as some of the most useful five other words. And uh, we just got a couple more rows on this table, but uh, definitely don't go away as we have uh, quite uh, a lot of words still to cover. As you can see, the next couple of rows have 8,000 and 9,000 words. So we will be getting to uh, a lot more words and uh, a lot more useful ways for you to score points. So definitely be sure to tune into the next video where we'll be talking about the next 8,000 bingos that we'll be studying. So that should be very exciting. Thanks for watching guys and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.